and everyone. Thank you so much for joining the fifth annual Japan Symposia, Industry, Academia, Open Innovation in Japan for Application of Human Embryonic Stem Cell and Induced Pluripotent Stem Cell Lines. This is our fifth year of doing this symposia. We are very honored to have our, uh, a tremendous team of experts from Japan. This is what we call informally the Japan Day of the World Stem Cell Summit. We understand that Japan, from its regulatory, government, industry, academia, is leading the field towards cell therapies. We have much we can do together and collaborate together, and we're honored to be able to present this to the audience that is listening to this live streamed and recorded. Uh, we hope that you will reach out to the, some of the speakers that you hear today. If you are a researcher interested in collaboration, commercialization, if you are working in a regulatory field from around the world, there's much that we can learn and do together. I want to introduce our moderator for this panel, Dr. Takashi Asada from Kyoto University, who is a dear friend. He personally escorted uh, myself and my wife to some of the sites and stem cell sites throughout Japan in our visit in August that opened my eyes and helped me understand the importance of us working together in a collaborative fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Bunny, for the kind of in uh, introduction. So today is a fifth time for Japan Symposium. We have uh, uh, two academia, also five uh, industries uh, attending this symposium. My name is Takashi Asta from Kyoto Tribune City. Uh, first speaker is Professor Norio Nakatsuji from Industrial Cell and Material Sciences Kyoto University. He talked about introduction to this symposium. Professor Nakatsuji, please. Thank you very much for taking time to attend this session. Uh, my role is uh, overviewing the whole session and uh, talk a little about uh, our own research. So keyword here is uh, academia, industry, uh, or industry academia collaboration, open innovation, and uh, human prepotent stem cells. Okay. Uh, so please allow me to introduce the uh, um, whole view of our institute uh, called ISEMS of Kyoto University. Um, it's a, uh, 10 years ago, Japanese government took a very ambitious project to make uh, six or 10 international uh, new style institute uh, focusing on uh, cross-disciplinary field and internationalization. So I, I uh, was a leader of the one uh, application, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I, it's successful. So I spent my more than five years to building new institute, uh, combining uh, cell biology and uh, chemistry and physics. So that uh, led to uh, uh, current my research, my own research combining uh, iPS-derived, ES-derived uh, cardiomyocyte uh, cells and nanofiber materials to make uh, a three-dimensional matured tissue-like structure. And uh, for the stem cell uh, concept, uh, this uh, cell material integration uh, looks like this one. So it uh, expands the capacity of the cell biology and cell engineering to the more uh, uh, combination with the chemi chemical compound and material for uh, propagation, differentiation, and three-dimensional construction and uh, transplantation. So we are heavily working on the uh, chemical libraries or uh, functional uh, materials. And uh, uh, so uh, after, since although I started as an academic res uh, basic researcher, uh, my recent uh, uh, interest is how to make uh, a good application of this very uh, uh, attractive preponderant stem cells to the uh, human health and drug discovery. So uh, then, 
rather than uh, uh, biological mechanism, uh, my focus, our focus is something like uh, large scale production, manufacturing, and quality control, and cost cutting reduction. And uh, still uh, challenging is the uh, functional maturation of the uh, polypotent stem cell derived cells and uh, quality control and uh, yeah, cost uh, tend to be very high. So uh, first uh, example of our own research is uh, how to make large scale production. So uh, traditionally, uh, uh, polypotent stem cells and other cells are uh, uh, cultured on the flat surface, like uh, culture dish or flask. But it's obvious, it has obvious limitation to for the expansion. So uh, I, we succeeded to make uh, aggregate culture. We call sphere culture of uh, around uh, 100 micron or uh, 200 micron diameter. And uh, just simple uh, uh, subculturing makes uh, uh, 10 times more cell production uh, compared to the surface uh, culture, so like uh, this one. So this uh, method was combined with uh, the polymer, uh, functional polymer that keep the, uh, such small particles suspended without uh, agitation or stirring. So currently, we are working uh, with, uh, heavily with the uh, Fujifilm group to uh, apply this project to, to for the uh, bioreactor of 10 liter or even higher without stirring. So that's a new concept. Because stirring agitation damages uh, this very sensitive, fragile stem cells. So that's a uh, uh, proof of concept of using uh, 200 milliliter culture back to culture uh, like 10 to 8 or more cells. Uh, so that uh, necessity to such a large production is obvious. So scientists, uh, laboratory scientists think uh, like uh, using culture dish to uh, cure one or two mice, <laughs> but uh, human, it's, uh, you need uh, at least 1,000 times more cells for, for the uh, actual uh, pro application. Okay, so another aspect is, uh, yeah, yes, uh, so large amount of, large number of preborn stem cells has no use. So <laughs> it should be uh, transformed to the uh, useful cell types. So we worked on the uh, cardiomyocyte and not uh, uh, t traditional cytokines or uh, protein application we try to replace those by small chemical compound by screening the uh, chemical library. And that tend to be very successful one. Um, it's already published. So uh, currently, uh, our group can differentiate uh, cardiomyocyte to the relatively matured one, uh, not totally matured, uh, with 95% or more uh, efficiency without any sorting by only using small chemical compound combination, no uh, cytokine, no protein. So it's reduced the cost to maybe 100 times less. So that's kind, this kind of uh, uh, progress should be uh, more advanced, uh, expanded to uh, the affordable, realized affordable uh, cell therapy. So that's uh, our method is very robust. So uh, every preponderant cell line we tested responded very well. And uh, uh, another uh, last uh, example is, uh, so uh, yes, it, one, it's one thing to make single cells or cell sheet, but uh, how to make three-dimensional uh, structure, it represents uh, body part or uh, organs. So uh, rather than putting the single cell layer uh, one to, to one, but we made uh, uh, aligned uh, nanofiber and put the cell suspension 
on top of the uh, nanofiber bundle uh, make autonomous, spontaneous, three-dimensional aligned uh, uh, cardiomyocyte. And that resembles very well with uh, uh, our own uh, heart dish. So uh, it looks like this one. So it's very easy to handle by forceps you can handle uh, and transplant. Uh, we are uh, collaborating with uh, uh, Professor Shiba, of next speaker, and uh, so, uh, so this is uh, patented, and uh, uh, now licensed to the uh, startup company, uh, we, oh, yeah, we found it, uh, 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 a company called Stem Cell and Device, so device is a keyword combination with the stem cells, and uh, later, uh, uh, Another member will uh, give a presentation about the, our company, but the concept is developed uh, in, at Kyoto University, and almost all the scientists join the, this startup company. So this is uh, one uh, example slide of the uh, SCAD. Okay, so uh, how many minutes do we have? It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so maybe, uh, I like to add one relatively recently published uh, uh, our study is uh, making uh, Alzheimer disease model neurons. Uh, 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 very different subject, but uh, um, very uh, useful application of prepotent stem cells is making, you, you can make any kind of uh, genetically modified uh, cells. Uh, with the uh, advancement of the CRISPR and other uh, uh, technology, it uh, becomes easier and quicker. Uh, this is, uh, our work is one done with a very traditional method using human yes cells. So uh, we introduced uh, the uh, uh, patient uh, disease uh, causing mutation. So. Uh, Take one uh, yes line we derived many years ago and uh, put uh, so either wild type gene or uh, mutated gene could be integrated. So that makes very nice pair of the cell line of only one gene different, others the same. And we differentiate into the uh, neurons and that shows actually uh, reduced activity in synapse uh, current. So it's shown the uh, DPSC. Uh, the top is the wild type, and the lower is the uh, mutated one. So that uh, shows the uh, neuron model of the something uh, uh, deficient, compromised neurons of uh, Alzheimer, probably. And we, t we screened uh, one Example of the application, we screen the uh, FDA approved chemical compound uh, to, to whether it, they want some can improve the such a deficiency. And we found uh, one or two. So that's a proof of concept of uh, application of such cell line for the uh, drug screening. So. Uh, uh, so this is a later part of my talk, just introducing the uh, following talk about our uh, uh, government project supported by Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. So it's an uh, industry-oriented uh, project funded by the METI Ministry. So from 2010, I led one group of uh, uh, including uh, a few excellent scientists, academia scientists with uh, uh, excellent technology-oriented Japanese companies. And uh, I'm very proud that they, some of them developed a new product on the market uh, based on our project, like uh, Nipro, Nipro Cell, Hama, uh, Takara Bio. And the current project is still going on. Uh, it's a rather ambitious project of manufacturing, uh, starting from the uh, cell stock, uh, either ES or IPS cells, and uh, expand to the 10 to 8th or 9th, 
using the already developed Nipro company's automatic bug culture system. And then next step is 10 liter or 100 liter of the suspended sphere culture carried out by Fujifilm currently in progress. And also differentiation induction or changing the system or uh, culture media and uh, make 10 to 10 or 10 to 11 cells of cardiomyocyte or neurons or other cell types. And the quality control system we are working on, even packaging and transportation system uh, like uh, using the uh, uh, temperature controlling devices. So that's uh, uh, my uh, brief introduction to the whole session. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Nakatsuji. Uh, question and answer, we have some uh, less of the time to produce. So next speaker is uh, Dr. Yuji Shiba from Shinshi University. Uh, she, uh, he talked about from the uh, preclinical transplant study of ips derived cardiomyocytes for cardiac repair. So, Dr. Shiba, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Asada, for the introduction. Um, so, before uh, starting my presentation, I'd like to take a moment to introduce Matsumoto City, where I, our university is located. So, Matsumoto is uh, surrounded by Japan Alps and, and famous for its beautiful view of mountains. And this is Matsumoto Castle, which was built over 400 years ago, and now one of the um, oldest castles that ever exists in Japan. And the right picture shows uh, my favorite place, Kamikochi National Park. And I, I just went there, and as you can see me here. So let's move on to today's topic. Um, the primary purpose of the study is to cure heart failure caused by so-called heart attack. The right figure shows, um, the right, right top figure shows uh, survival rate of patients diagnosed with heart failure. As you, as you can see, the most of the patients died within 10 years. For these patients, heart transplantation is uh, usually um, is um, last resort, but usually only effective treatment. The right bottom figure shows um, number of heart transplantation worldwide. As you can see, the number of heart transplantation is somewhat on the decline for the past 20 years. So new treatment for heart failure is required. Uh, one of the most, uh, one of the um, promising um, treatment for heart failure is cardiac regeneration. So far, many cell types were tried, including bone marrow cells, um, skeletal myoblast, mesenchymal stem cells, or resident cardiac stem cells. S surprisingly, most cell types have been shown to improve cardiac contractile function, at least to some extent, in both preclinical pre and clinical studies. But now we know that uh, transplanted uh, cells are not transdifferentiated into cardiomyocytes in vivo. They just work via paracrine effect. But our goal is um, brick and mortar regeneration using cardiomyocyte and make them pump in sync with the host heart. So I started out this project in 2008 when I was in Seattle. Uh, this picture was taken when I was there. There were three Japanese here in this picture. Uh, Ichiro was at bat, and Matsuzaka in bottom red socks took the mound, and I was here again. So, um, pluripotent stem cells are attractive cell sources for cardiomyocytes because of its unlimited self renewal. Uh, we add Actin A followed by BMP4 uh, to monolayer cultured in, uh, undifferentiated ES cells. After two weeks of differentiation, and the cell starts beating spontaneously like this movie. When we transplanted these cardiomyocytes in injured guinea pig hearts, uh, the cell survived and um, improved cardiac contractile, contractile function. But, um, most of the studies using pluripotent stem cell derived cardiomyocytes were performed in dental transplantation model. But we really don't know the immune response when the cells were transplanted into the same species. 
So allogenic transplantation is required to uh, better understand the effect effectiveness of this treatment. For allogenic transplantation, we selected Cyanomonas monkey as a new model. And no one would dispute that um, monkey is a good model for um, uh, transplantation study, but there are some drawbacks. First, it is expensive. And second, care should be managed almost like humans, which means a number of people need to be involved in this experiment. And finally, it is hard to find an appropriate facility to um, perform primate work, since there are only a few primate centers, at least in Japan. Uh, to minimize immune rejection following allogenic transplantation, we performed, uh, we established MHC um, match transplantation model. Here, we established iPS cells from MHC homozygous monkey and transdifferentiate them toward cardiomyocytes. The recipient animals are MHC heterozygous, but either of the, either of the MHC haplotypes is, is identical to donor MHC. First, we tested if, trans, uh, if uh, this uh, MHC mass transplantation system inhibits immune rejection uh, in, uh, in vitro. The upper panel showed um, in, vitro mixed re, in, in vitro mixed reaction. When uh, two lymphocytes from uh, two different animals were co-cultured, they, uh, they identified different MHC and proliferate, like the second bar uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the bottom graph. But when we co-cultured our lymphocytes from uh, MHC homozygous and heterozygous monkey, the proliferation was inhibited. Next, we generated iPS cells from MHC homozygous monkey. The iPS cells are expressed protein markers right, by RT-PCR and, immun and immunohist immunohistology. When we transplanted these uh, iPS cells into immunodeficient mice, they formed typical teratomas, including intestine, and cartridge, and skin tissue, meaning they are real iPS cells. Finally, uh, the iPS cells showed normal karyotype. Next, we generated uh, monkey cardiomyocytes. Uh, we successfully generated monkey cardiomyocytes from iPS cells by the same protocol as in human es derived cardiomyocytes. They are essentially positive for cardiac troponin T by uh, immunohistochemistry and flow cytometry. Uh, sorry for the busy slide, but um, it shows um, in vivo transplantation study protocol. We did MHC mismatched and matched transplantation study. For MHC mismatch study, uh, myocardial infarction was produced by ischemia refabulation model, and animals were treated with methylprednisolone and tacrolimus, and after two weeks of, of myocardial infarction, um, 400 million iPS cell derived cardiomyocytes were transplanted, and animals were sacrificed after four weeks of transplantation, and histological analysis was performed. For MHC mass transplantation study, a myocardial infarction was model was produced and animals were treated with the same protocol. And either 400 million iPS cell derived cardiomyocytes or just vehicle was, were transplanted and cardiac contractor function was evaluated by a micro CT as well as echocardiography before cell transplantation and four weeks and 12 weeks post transplantation. Cardiac arrhythmias were monitored by Holter ECG at every two weeks and animals were sacrificed after 12 weeks of transplantation. And um, graft cardiomyocytes were electrically analyzed by GCAMP imaging, I'll show you later this, and histological analysis was performed. And um, histological analysis, analysis revealed that um, only a tiny amount of graft cells labeled with GFP survived with significant infiltr infiltration of inflammatory cells in MHC mismatched model. The, Many of the inflammatory cells are CD3 positive T lymphocytes, suggesting uh, grafts were, were acutely rejected. On the other hand, in MHC match transplantation model, a substantial number, amount of uh, grafted cells survived without significant inf infiltration of uh, t um, inflammatory cells, even after 12 weeks of transplantation. So we further analyzed uh, the cardio, uh, graft cells by histology. As you can see, substantial amount of uh, graft cells labeled with GFP survived in the anterior part of left ventricle. The most of the graft cells are C, uh, cardiac troponin T positive uh, cardiomyocytes. 
And this pair of pictures shows clear sarcomere structure identified by another cardiac marker, alpha actinin, in the graft area. And the graft area was very vascularized by, um, identified by CD31 positive uh, in serial cells. But all of the CD31 positive cells are negative for GFP, suggesting uh, N serial cells are derived from host tissue. And the expression of gap junction protein connection 43 in the graft was relatively rare, but it, it, but it, but, but, um, it was consistent with, with, a, with our previous work. So now, um, the uh, cardiac conductive function was evaluated by um, micro CD. So this movie shows the base level of contraction. There was no big difference. But um, sorry, can you start the movie? Oh, thanks. So in the base level, there was no uh, big difference of in contraction between the recipients of IPS cardiomyocytes cardiomyocytes or just vehicle. But when we see when we see apex level of contraction, the recipients of IPS cardiomyocytes cardiomyocytes show better contraction. When we see longitudinal view, yeah, we can see the same difference. The contraction of apex level is, is better in uh, IPS derived cardiomyocytes. Uh, this slide summarizes the movie. Um, so ejection fraction before cell trans 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 transplantation is not di was not different between recipients of vehicle or IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes, but uh, Recipients of IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes showed better contraction at four weeks and 12 weeks post transplantation. Uh, fraction shortening uh, by echocardiography revealed the same trend in, uh, as, as in uh, ejection fraction. Next, we try to confirm if transplanted cardiomyocytes electrically coupled with host cardiomyocytes. Uh, uh, to, um, to visualize contraction of cardiomyocytes, we generated iPS cells expressing fluorescent calcium indicator G camp. This movie shows um, cardiomyocytes flushing in sync with their contraction. So when we transplanted these um, cardiomyocytes into uh, in vivo, and the, you can see graft, uh, graft cardiomyocytes flushing in sync with in sync with the ECG, indicating a host graft electrical, electrical integration. The graft cardiomyocytes uh, keep coupling even after the heart rate was increased by electrical stimulation. Uh, now on um, four hertz, which is uh, 240 feet beat per minute. And even five hertz. Uh, this slide summarizes the movie. Um, there were three graft areas identified by the GCAMP imaging. Uh, the three traces in the lower panel shows um, GCAM transients, and GCAM transients are always in sync with the ECG. Finally, I'd like to show you the analysis of Horta ECG. Uh, there was a ventricular tachycardia shown here observed. The right figure shows fraction of animals showing, um, showing ventricular tachycardia. The incidence of VT was significantly increased in the recipients of IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes after cell transplantation. The right bottom figure shows um, sustained ventricular tachycardia, which was sustained for more than 30 seconds. The VT was observed only in the recipients of IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes. The left bottom figure shows duration of VT in each recipient. The duration peaked on day seven through 14 and was gradually decreased thereafter. Now I'd like to summarize my presentation. IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes survived in infected hearts for at least 12 weeks following IMH mass allergenic transplantation. And graft cardiomyocytes electrically coupled with host cardiomyocytes and improved cardiac contraction. Or the transient and transplantation of IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes significantly increased the incidence of non lethal VT. Uh, in conclusion, IPS cell derived cardiomyocytes regenerated 
the infected heart in non-human primate, but post-transplant arrhythmias need to be overcome before clinical use. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Shiba. Uh, from now, from the uh, industrial talk, first is uh, Mr. Takuya Yokokawa from Fujifilm Corporation. He'll talk about Fujifilm's resin medicine. Uh, please, Yokokawa. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Takuya Yokokawa uh, from Healthcare Business Development Office of Fujifilm Corporation, Japan. The Fujifilm is known as a photographic film manufacturing company, and actually still we continue to make it, but the business volume of that is very small nowadays. I used to be the photographic R&D person, and for 20 years I had developed various types of photographic materials. Then I moved to the pharmaceutical R&D, and then now the regenerative medicine business office. So I'd like, uh, today I'd like to share with you uh, about Fujifilm's legend of medicines. Uh, this slide shows the pharma and legend of medicine business structure of Fujifilm Corporation. Central part is Fujifilm's technology platform such as compound design, analysis, non-technology, and image diagnosis, and quality control system of manufacturing, and collagen technologies. All from photographic development and manu manufacturing and its relating technologies. To establish medical treatment business, we Fujifilm add, add, had added three groups of uh, operational companies. Uh, one is a small molecule farmers, Toyama Chemicals, Fujifilm Fine Chemistries, and Fujifilm Farmers, and the light sides of biopharmaceuticals such as uh, Fujifilm Diosense Biotechnologies, Fujifilm RI Firm and Perocells Proteo Mix, and also the Fujifilm Kyowa Kirin Biologics. And third one is regenerative medicine related companies, the Japan Tish Engineering and Cellular Dynamics International. I'll uh, comment some details a little bit later. And uh, also the Fujifilm Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Research Laboratory and the Regenerative Medicine Research Laboratory. That is uh, the Fujifilm's original basic research organizations. And this slide shows the Fujifilm's Regenerative Medicine initiatives, our first step. We understand cell science-based technologies, two layers. Firstly, cell science-based related basic technologies, such as devices, scaffold material technologies and services, and also the IPS cells for drug discovery. And secondly, the cell therapy applications. Our RCP technologies will be applied for the JTX tissue engineering products, and also three-dimensional tissues or organ with IPS-derived cells. And this slide shows the comparison of photofilm and cells. Left side is the electron microscopic picture of uh, the cross section of photofilm. Thickness of the photosensitive layers is about 20 micrometers. Within this uh, 20 micrometers, there are about 20 layers. And each layer contains a nanocrystalline, nanodispersed crystalline silver halide and also the nano-dispersed functional particles together with collagens. Look at the light side. This is a cross-section of liver cell, same magnification of the electron microscopic pictures. We can see the well-designed, fine structure of that. I think you can understand the Fuji's nano-sized manufacturing technologies, also adaptable for the biotech Biotech, uh, biotechnology areas. And uh, collagen is one of the major raw material, photographic materials. So we have many specialists of, of collagen. And uh, they had made infinite characteristics of collagen. 
uniformity and similar, uh, similarity to human type 1 collagens using gene technology and yeast cells. We call it the recombinant peptides, RCP, and already we succeeded in a large scale up manufacturing for four years ago. Of course, we are good at manufacturing many kinds of materials, such as uh, the micro pieces, sponges, hydrogels, microspheres, films also. When we combine the particular shape of RCP particles with cell, we call it cell -like, we saw the very interesting features. So we introduced a pancreatic islet with MSC cell -like to the diabetic model mice. And please look at the light graph of, uh, in these slides. In this slide, the blue line is a normal mice. And the top pink line is a diabetic mice, and the red line, upper line, uh, down line is the diabetic mouse with islet with MSC cells, like, including our RCP uh, materials. So again, we are very much interested in the scaffold technologies, and we can provide of RCP as a research use and manufacturing use also. And this slide shows our group company, CDI, founded in 2004 by world-renowned researcher, Dr. James Thompson of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the first in the world to generate ES cells. Fujifilm acquired the CDI in May 2015 and spreading its research and business worldwide. We are very much interested in drug discovery system using its IPS-related cells and its related medicine products also. And this is our group company, JTIC feature. JTIC is founded in 1999, already gets two products in the market, Jace and Jack. Jace Autologous Cultured Epidemics approved in 2007, and Jack Autologous Cultured cartridge products approved in 2012. Now expanding its sales in Japan, also they started CDMO business using their know-how to develop regenerative medicine products in Japan. And in December 2014, JTIC became a considered subsidiary company of Fujifilm. And lastly, I'd like to share with you about firm activities because Fujifilm has contributed to do the leadership of a firm uh, since its starting. Now the chairman of firm is Mr. Toda, who is a Fujifilm CTO, and I am the head of the steering committee. Firm has now 204 companies from various kinds of business area. And uh, here shows uh, some of the well-known companies. And lastly, uh, one of our activities in international collaboration. Recently, we have focused in the Asian Pacific collaboration and exchanged MOU with Australia, Korea, and uh, China. And we will be exchange, uh, exchange MOU with India and Taiwan soon. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tak. Uh, Yokokawa. Next speaker is Mitsuru uh, Inamura from Liprocell. Uh, he's talking about practical application of IPS cells from drug development and risk medicine. So, Dr. Uh, Inamura, please. Thank you for introduction. It is a pleasure to be here to talk about my company activities. Uh, I came from Liprocell, Japan. Uh, Japan uh, Liprocell company founded by Dr. Nakaji Sensei, and recently acquired uh, uh, two companies in the US and two companies in Europe, uh, StemGent, BioSub, Renabet, and BioOpta, to cover IPS cell technologies. Uh, our main, uh, currently, our sales activity focused in uh, research area and drug discovery area and provide the regent, media, and IPS cells. And now we are moving toward uh, regent medicine area. 
uh, this is a, a roadmap for the Japanese area, uh, divided into three steps. First is the uh, updating, upgrading our research regent area, uh, regent into the uh, clinical uh, media regent. And step two is a somatic uh, regenerative medicine. And the final third step is a regenerative medicine by uh, using iPS cells. <clears throat> it is essential for you, uh, delivering clinical uh, iPS cells uh, for delivery, uh, for regenerative medicine area. For I am now building the uh, GMP grade RNA repairing kit, uh, coating solution, and media and the uh, cloud of free freezing media. Uh, last year, we launched to the Ripro cloud free uh, freezing media. Uh, this media uh, can uh, be stored uh, IP cells with high variety and high growth uh, after swing. And we are now uh, starting to man manufacturing GMP grade and register will be finished to uh, the beginning of the uh, early next year. And Reprocell is already a uh, global company. So we are located in Japan and the US and Europe. So we can consult with local regulatory authorities, uh, such as FDA, PMDA, EMA. So we can, and we can design manufacturing tailor-made media. And let me shift to the RN replant systems, uh, our main, my main topics in this presentation. Uh, RN replant systems is the latest technology to establish of iPS cells. The, there are many advantages uh, in replant systems, virus-free, DNA-free, and non-genetic integration, and provide a GMA competitive grade. Uh, first commercial available repairing kit is launched to the 2010 years. Uh, this kit is able to generate fibro iPS cells from fibroblast. And last year, we launched to the uh, new RNA kit. Uh, this kit is able to uh, establish from blood cells. And this year, uh, we can again launch to the new repairing kit, non-modified RNA repairing kit. This kit, this kit uh, is able to establish the iPS cells from skin, blood, and urine, a three kinds of the, uh, sources. Uh, it is easy to isolate the epithelial cells from sources and efficiently transfected in the RNA. Uh, the protocol is very simple. Uh, Plate the fibroblast or donor cells and uh, transfect RNA with repeatedly, and uh, daily media change and colony identification. So you can obtain the iPS cells in within two weeks, and RNA is not no integration. So uh, you can uh, you you don't have to uh, screen you. And efficiency is very high. For example, uh, in, by, from fibroblast, you can pick up to the thousand colonies per well, and uh, differential cable is is no, uh, is no, no, no difference uh, confirmed. And this uh, commercial available kit is provides three components, and provides as a GMP compatible grade and manufactured by RNA Therapeutics Company exclusively for Reprocell. And we can provide the RNA and iPS cells on your request as custom uh, custom order. And uh, there is no evidence uh, existing the uh, exogenetic uh, repairing factor in iPS cells within two or three passages. And this is the most uh, prominent advantage of repairing systems. RNA repairing reduces the number of copy number validation. Uh, please see the, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, please see the lower uh, table. Uh, in iPS cells, by using retrovirus vectors, there are a lot of copy number variation uh, changes. The reduced uh, 
copy number or lost single genes or double genes. On the other hand, uh, by using RNA reference systems, uh, reduced the risk or frequency of changing the copy number variation. So by using RNA reference systems, you can get the intact uh, clean iPS cells. So already a lot of uh, institutes use RNA reference systems. Recently, uh, New York Stem Cell Foundation has published the paper Automated High Throughput uh, Deliberation of uh, iPS cells by using RNA reference systems. So last of uh, my slide is uh, show the comparison with RNA and senderless vectors. Uh, RNA reference systems delivered a lot of iPS cells from several uh, disease or donor cells. Okay. For example, the Parkinson or uh, breast cancer stem cells uh, are only efficiently the IPS cells than uh, Sendai virus vectors. Sendai virus vectors is a main, uh, a lot of major of the reprogram system in Japan, but our reprogram systems is superior. So in summary, uh, repro cell uh, coverage IPS cell technologies uh, produce cells reprogramming by RNA and differentiation. So it is happy to help or assist for genetic missing area or drug screening. Thank you, Atenas. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Inamura. Next speaker is Mr. Hiroshi Ozawa from Ajinomoto Company. Uh, he's talking about development novel xenofree medium stem feed for human prepotent stem cells. So, Mr. Ozawa, please. Thank you very much, Professor Asada. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hiroki Ozawa from Ajinomoto. Um, so first of all, I like to thank the organizers for allowing me to uh, speak at this uh, fantastic conference. Today, um, I'd like to introduce our product, StemFit, a medium for prepotent stem cell. Um, before beginning uh, my talk about the cell culture medium, uh, I'd like to give you a brief introduction of my company, Ajinomoto. Ajinomoto um, is the world's leading manufacturer of high quality amino acid. So we, um, we were established in uh, 1909 uh, for manufacturing the monosodium glutamate as a umami seasoning for uh, contribution to the nutrition of Japanese people. Since then, uh, over 100 years, uh, we, have, uh, we have contributed to human health globally by creating unique values in foods, amino acid application, and pharmaceuticals. Here are uh, our products. Uh, we have developed uh, a variety of food products and biopharmic chemicals and pharmaceuticals and so on. So we have developed um, a variety of businesses and products uh, based on our technology platform, such as uh, amino acid nutrition research, uh, powder technology, which is mainly applied in the nutrient development, analytical technique, and biotechnologies. So taken together uh, with our platform technology and the business experiences, we have just um, succeeded in the development of the prepotent stem cell medium, StemFit. Um, actually, um, we, we've been uh, working in the cell culture media uh, nearly 30 years. So we uh, launched an ASF medium, um, Ajinomoto cell and feeding medium, in 1987. To develop um, for the uh, optimal media formulation, so it is needed to combine uh, several technologies. We especially expertise in uh, amino acid, which is an uh, essential ingredient for cell culture medium and uh, analytical technologies. Analytical technology is uh, contribute to significantly uh, to development of the uh, media because uh, media usually consists of dozens of the formulation, uh, dozens of the components, and uh, their um, their concentrations vary very widely from picomola to millimola. So it is needed to uh, analyze every component and comprehensively for media formulation. So now uh, we focused on the emerging market, regenerative medicine. 
IPS or ES cell uh, hold a great promise uh, as a cell source of the regenerative medicine because these cells can propagate unlimitedly and they can give rise to uh, every type of the cell in the body. So first, um, we focused on the stage of the establishment and the uh, expansion of the IPS cell. For development of the media, uh, we have collaborated with the Kyoto University. So with high expertise uh, in IPS cell research of the Kyoto University, uh, we have succeeded in the uh, development of the prototype medium, Stenfit AK01. So based on this media, uh, we have um, developed a clinical grade media, AK03M. So all protein of this medium are switched to the recombinant ones. And also, we have uh, developed the research grade media, AK02M, with high cost performance components without changing the composition. Now, we just launched um, Stanford Basic 02 in USA uh, last September. So here are uh, the futures of Stanford. Stanford is a xenophilic medium for field free culture with various matrices. The cell can be uh, dissociated in a single cell and uh, uh, can be inoculated with the uh, exact cell number. It is very important to establish some um, reproducible and stable protocol. And the cell can uh, expand more than 100 times in the single passage with uh, less frequency of the medium feeding. So let me introduce the um, following three features uh, in detail. The first feature of the Stanford is a superior and stable growth performance. So in this experiment, on feeder culture IPS cell were trans transitioned to uh, feeder free culture with laminin 501E8 or uh, vitronectin. As you can see, uh, red line uh, culture in the Stanford uh, display a, a very linear um, growth curve uh, with a um, high expansion uh, capacity while expressing the pluripotent markers. And we also tested um, uh, ev uh, other com commercial available matrices like laminin 521 or Matesia. So we found that uh, uh, Stanford enable uh, so growth uh, with all of the commercial matrices even at the low seeding densities. The second feature is uh, cost effectiveness. So usually, uh, everyday uh, media changing is needed for the prepotent stem cell culture. Uh, Stanford um, can maintain the cell without the uh, weekend feeding uh, and uh, with less media consumption. Uh, from both sides of the late labor load and the media consumption, stem fit enable cost effective culture. The third feature is a high colony forming efficiency. Stem fit enable high colony forming efficiency, uh, which, are, uh, which are applying the uh, downstream of the application such as genome editing. So um, the gray bar in this experiment, so nine cells uh, power well are uh, seeded in the 96th well, and after one week, we found that uh, uh, many colonies can get within uh, stem feet. So in this graph, uh, the gray bar represents the number of the wells, uh, and the upper two graph uh, is a result of the stem feet and the down of the uh, competitor medium. So now, Stanford is uh, used by many customers, not only in Japan, but also over, uh, over the world. So now we got uh, tw 27 publications so far. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. And if you are interested in our product, please visit our booth 516. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ozawa. Next speaker is Dr. Seigo Izumo from Takeda Pharmaceutical Company. He talked about t cider an industry academia collaboration in attempt to overcome this barrier. Dr. Izumo, please. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Asara, uh, for kind invitation for this exciting session. Uh, as uh, Professor Nakatsuji mentioned in his uh, beginning talk, uh, the theme of this session is uh, industry-academia collaboration uh, as it relates to uh, uh, stem cell uh, the technology. Um, Takeda Pharmaceutical Company traditionally has been the uh, pharmaceutical, particularly in a small molecule company, but we have em embarked on a regenerative medicine area a little over a year ago. And the vehicle we have used is a, a program we call t sila which I describe in great detail. It has a number of uh, untraditional uh, features. 
uh, with an attempt to overcome the so-called Death Valley, um, uh, which uh, I will also elaborate later. So, a uh, brief introduction about Takeda Pharmaceutical Company, uh, founded uh, 235 years ago. Um, under new leadership of uh, uh, Christoph Weber, uh, he's actually a Frenchman, first uh, foreign CEO uh, to be a, a CEO of a Takeda. Uh, he has focused on the therapeutic area uh, into four, uh, GI, oncology, CNS, and a vaccine. And uh, uh, these are the um, main area. Of course, we have other businesses. And uh, uh, we have about 1.1800 billion yen, or US 16.1 uh, billion uh, uh, dollar uh, revenue, with a uh, uh, number of employees in 31,000 in uh, more than 70 countries, or 90 countries, rather. And uh, this is our mission to uh, strive toward a better health for people worldwide through re leading innovative uh, innovation in medicine. So innovation is a key word uh, for our company. Uh, so back in 2015, uh, Takeda and uh, uh, IPS uh, 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 cell research application, Syra at the Kyoto University, agreed to start a 10-year-long uh, research collaboration, uh, t Syra joint program. Uh, the unique uh, uh, feature of uh, uh, T-Syra is first a long term, uh, 10 years uh, 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 they at least, uh, committed by both Syra and Takeda, aiming to uh, develop uh, cell therapies and drug discovery using IPS cells. The program is uh, solely directed by Professor Shin Yamanaka. Uh, this is a little bit unusual because typically industry academia collaboration, we have joint steering committee. Uh, equal number, you know, represent, uh, you know, each party. What happens is uh, the, well, that means that uh, no one really has a power to make a decision and often uh, lead to protracted uh, uh, discussion. Usually company reserves a right to, you know, for the uh, things that they cannot uh, agree. Com company may have a last word, but that also leaves sort of a Hard, hard sense, sort of uh, hard feeling, so to speak, on, uh, on the academia side. So we decided, and also together with the fact that the Professor Yamanaka really doesn't have a time for uh, committees, uh, he said. So we said, there's no committee. Uh, Dr. Yamanaka decides. So uh, this, uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, unique feature. And open innovation housed in the center of a drug company's research headquarters. Uh, the, uh, in fact, that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, traditional uh, academia industry collaboration, usually industry provide the money and the research take place in academia, but in this case, uh, it is uh, uh, research take place in the uh, Pharmaceutical Research Institute. And the Takeda provide uh, uh, the total research budget of approximately 20, uh, 20 billion yen over 10 years plus in-kind support of uh, uh, at least 50 uh, Takeda FTEs, researchers, uh, drug discovery technologies such as screening and other R&D know-how. And uh, uh, over 100 researchers are at one site already, and the program uh, recruits scientists uh, not only uh, from Sila but uh, from other academia as well. So this is a framework uh, of a T-Syra collaboration. Let's see what this, oh, here, oh, it's working. So Syra they provide uh, IPS cell science and technology, uh, drug target in some cases, prototype assays, and uh, uh, PIs and the postdoctoral uh, researchers. Takeda, on the other hand, uh, provide uh, R&D know-how, facility, equipment, uh, researchers, uh, uh, you know, additional researchers, uh, from a comp uh, company employees, basically, and uh, drug discovery platforms uh, and the budget. So uh, we, uh, this is a framework, so we work on the cell therapy, drug discovery, drug safety and efficacy, and the tool development. Uh, the only thing is really, you know, the, you have to use IPS cell at some point uh, during the, uh, the research of the each project. And, uh, uh, the collaborative effort, if it's a cell therapy, uh, the, together with uh, our pharmaceutical science division, um, uh, my unit, the regenerative medicine unit, will take it forward for cell therapy and gene therapy uh, in clinical development. Uh, if it's a drug discovery program, uh, Takeda's drug discovery unit, 
uh, will, um, uh, the, where the large number of chemists also work, uh, uh, they will take the, uh, the hit to uh, uh, lead to a lead optimization and appropriate preclinical studies to uh, fire the IND and uh, uh, the new drug uh, uh, clinical development uh, through the therapeutic area units. So uh, the, uh, although this portion is uh, 100 uh, uh, plus uh, people, but uh, this is supported by the Takeda uh, Shonan Research Center with uh, more than 1,000 people, uh, which uh, you know, has a various expertise in the compound, uh, compound library screening, uh, the other uh, the pharmaceutical uh, expertise and DMPK uh, toxicology and so on. And uh, it is entirely possible that uh, not you know, the every clinical candidate come out from a t cyber program, uh, Takeda is able to develop uh, for uh, future clinical application. Uh, that could be, uh, you know, maybe simply that uh, 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 too many uh, candidates, uh, which is actually not a bad thing, but uh, uh, maybe that, uh, you know, they, by then, uh, when these things mature, that uh, uh, companies' uh, therapeutic area strategy may not necessarily uh, uh, fit with uh, what can come out uh, through this. So in that case, in order not to sort of uh, uh, the, uh, let the you know, project languish uh, on the shelf, we actually return the IPs to uh, uh, Syrah so that the Syrah is free to collaborate with other uh, companies in order to capitalize on their uh, investment. Um, so uh, this is actually uh, where uh, t Syrah is located. Um, uh, it is uh, literally in the middle of the uh, Takeda, uh, Takeda's uh, Shonan Research Center and uh, uh, the various uh, laboratory equipment, office area, uh, cell, extensive cell culture system, and uh, uh, also they have access to screening and uh, basically all the machines in uh, Takeda that has uh, within the, uh, this building uh, is accessible uh, to uh, t Syrah program, including a uh, uh, vivarium that can actually not only do uh, small mo uh, animals, but uh, large animals uh, in, uh, as well. So, uh, the, this is, uh, you know, total space is about 5,000 uh, square meter, and uh, total budget is uh, 32 billion yen uh, over 10 years, 200 uh, billion yen for direct research, and about 12 billion dollar uh, yen, uh, rather, uh, worth of uh, uh, support, uh, in-kind support. Um, By the way, this uh, t Syrah, uh, the logo up here, uh, this uh, uh, actually, uh, yes, you may, uh, some of you might have noticed that uh, it takes uh, four colors of uh, Syrah, you know, represent the four Yamanaka factors, and uh, uh, center uh, is a uh, uh, paper crane, uh, which uh, in Japanese uh, means a prayer uh, for, for, uh, for the sick and the unfortunate. So uh, uh, the, we put uh, uh, as a theme of T-Syra, reprogramming the future uh, with the hope that uh, this research will lead to uh, uh, novel therapies for uh, patients suffering from intractable disease. And uh, uh, these are the uh, principal investigators in t Syrah program. Uh, the, I don't, uh, 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 you know, read each one of them, but it suffice to say they are professors, associate professors, assistant professors at Syrah initially, but also we have an uh, 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 associate professor from Yokohama City University, we have just adopted another person, uh, they are uh, not from Syrah, not from Yokohama, so, uh, and then interviewing another person from outside of Syrah. So uh, we are still uh, building, but uh, uh, principal investigators are not really restricted to uh, Kyoto University faculty. And uh, uh, these are the uh, kind of projects we are working on, on the beta cell, uh, the development of uh, uh, the device uh, for, uh, for type 1 diabetes, uh, and, uh, as well as uh, uh, drug screening. And uh, uh, the, the, in the CNS area, uh, we are working on a new uh, degenerative disease, uh, in this case, at uh, this stage, uh, primarily on the drug uh, screening uh, using a patient-derived iPS cells. Cardiomyocyte project consists of a cell therapy program uh, as well as a drug discovery, uh, again, they're using a patient-derived uh, iPS cells. Scleral muscle uh, disease, uh, we are doing a small molecule screen for Duchenne myosin myopathy, um, and as well as a gene uh, editing uh, for the Duchenne um, uh, muscular dystrophy uh, by means of uh, exon skipping. 
And uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, liver, uh, the, we are working on uh, the, the using a mini organ uh, the developed by Dr. Takebe at uh, the Yokohama University. Uh, we are using it for prediction of liver toxicity as well as the drug screening uh, using uh, uh, the mini organ itself rather than a single cell type. And uh, oncology, we currently focus on the, uh, the iPS-derived uh, 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 the T cell uh, uh, with uh, engineered T cell receptor, antigen-specific T cell receptor. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, the retreat we had uh, uh, in August, uh, Dr. Yamanaka here. So now there are uh, you know, the more than 100 uh, members uh, actively engaged, and uh, we are all uh, very excited about you know, literary uh, uh, academic uh, faculty, uh, as well as the postdoc and the researchers. Kyoto University recognized T. Saira as a, a branch of a Kyoto University because Dr. Yamanaka has a total say, I mean, you know, he is directing the program. So uh, they, we have an opportunity to actually train young people on the drug discovery uh, or, re uh, or cell therapy uh, in, uh, in actually at the forefront of uh, research. Uh, let me actually touch upon the, uh, the so-called death valley that you are all familiar. Japan you know, has a, lot, a great academia and a number of uh, uh, new discoveries are made, but uh, unfortunately there are uh, the sort of a uh, you know, vehicle to uh, bring uh, academic seed to a full product. The infrastructure, sort of a community is missing. And some, you know, the discovery made in the Japanese academia eventually become product, but it's actually in the uh, hand of a foreign uh, uh, the ventures or foreign uh, pharmaceutical company. So uh, what can we do about it? Uh, and what are the issues uh, on the death body in Japan? So these are the uh, reasons that are uh, often said. Uh, the very few venture companies or angel investors in Japan for a variety of reasons. And uh, typically, that, uh, you know, these uh, uh, venture companies, there's a one research project, one company. So uh, when the project dies, uh, the company dies, and then this will uh, sort of uh, cause a loss of momentum as well as sort of a negative feeling and sort of a discourage people to, uh, you know, they, uh, dis uh, discourage the people to uh, recruit the talented people. Okay, and also the shortage of fund, you know, typically fund is like a three years, four years at most, and uh, uh, the difficult, uh, and the restriction of research facility. You know, these uh, uh, companies often have to uh, work in the area that are very suboptimal for so their appli uh, application research. And also conflict about, uh, uh, conflict on intellectual properties. When you have academic industry collaboration, which side did more work? You know, 90% is actually done by pharmaceutical science, and uh, how, what is the sort of a equitable way to divide, you know, IP, et cetera. So at t uh, the, we try to sort of uh, address it um, in the following way. So the Takeda is playing like a, a role of a venture in this case, uh, as well as the incubator, because we are providing uh, uh, the space and uh, money and, uh, and also FTEs. And we have a re uh, research portfolio, multiple projects. So one project die, that a program still is maintained. It will be replaced with a new one. So this actually sort of a make a, uh, we believe that will lead to the better decision because uh, you know, when your entire company depends on the one product, you, you try not to kill that project when it is actually should be killed. But uh, we have portfolio, so uh, we should just uh, you know, let the science drive. And uh, we, as I mentioned, uh, sufficient fund and a sufficient duration. Uh, so long duration, so uh, uh, the, uh, the academic faculties are actually interested in uh, uh, tackling a problem that requires a long time but highly innovative. And uh, direct participation of researchers uh, on the same site, this will create actually a, a very productive environment. And, uh, 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 and also uh, at the TSIRA, basically, uh, the, every IP come from t Saira, the jointly owned by Kyoto University and Takeda. Even it's, uh, that particular IP is at 1% uh, Takeda contribution, 99% the Saira contribution, or vice versa. Uh, we said uh, all 50-50. This is like a sort of like a marriage. After you get married, who earned the money actually doesn't matter. Everything after your marriage, all things acquired is 50-50. 
So this will actually avoid uh, the sort of a daily uh, squirm uh, over you know, who, who, did more, uh, who did more what. So uh, the last slide, uh, in summary, uh, while there have been a number of success in the past, you know, traditional industry academia collaboration have largely faced the difficulties uh, and, and to deliver clinical uh, uh, useful results, TSIRA program is a new form of industry academia collaboration in research, a facility of a pharmaceutical company in order to deliver cell therapies and new drugs using IPS technologies. And the TSIRA program is an attempt to overcome this valley toward the innovative therapies. I have to say disclaimer because TSIRA just started a little over a year ago. So uh, whether this hypothesis is correct or not, you will know uh, 10 years from now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Izumo. Uh, last speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Margaret Ann Craig uh, from Stem Cell and Device Laboratories. So, Dr. Ann Craig, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm delighted to be part of the Japanese delegation uh, this afternoon, although you may realize that I am not actually Japanese. Um, but I Actually, I'm based in Glasgow, and I travel to Japan every month, and fortunately to work with stem cell and device labs in Kyoto. So I'll give a little introduction to the company uh, and our technologies, where they fit in the mar current market, and uh, the use of these technologies for the drug discovery screening market. So Stem Cell and Devices is a company which is based in Kyoto. It's founded by Professor Nakatsuji, who is uh, a real trailblazer in the field, and he has successfully formed a, a stem cell company and now has a second company. So not content with retirement, he's decided to keep working and to commercialize more of the products and the patents from Kyoto University. So um, the, the company was founded in May 2014 and it has several patents licensed from Kyoto University. What it, its first product is, is to um, develop cardiac stem cells for use for drug screening. So the stem cells that currently exist in the market are generally 2D models and they have uh, issues with maturity and also with um, the responses to compounds. And so now the future is to look at 3D models of cardiac stem cells for drug screening. So Professor Nakatsuji and his team have been working to develop 3D models. They differentiate uh, cardiac cells uh, using uh, no cytokines and also the, have these proprietary cells and then they add these onto nanofiber technology. And they've been developing and patenting these nanofibers so that we have a stable and um, reproducible 3D structure which uh, imitates what the, the natural heart uh, would behave and look like. So th these 3D structures then are developed in Kyoto and they can be shipped internationally to any lab globally. So they have been um, developed, they, they have a high purity, the cardiac cells have a high purity of around 90, 70% of cardiac cells and they can then be added to the, the nanofiber structure and these structures can uh, have a stable frame. The structures are about 15 millimeters by, one mil uh, by 10 millimeters, and they can be handled easily with forceps, and so they are transported as live beating structures to any lab globally. So why are these tissues so important and so relevant just now? So for many pharma companies, the ability to look for cardiac toxicity of any potential compound they're developing is a serious business for them. And over the, the last few years, there have been many notable failures of cardiac drugs uh, in the market. So the FDA does have regulatory testing methods to look at the potential toxicity of compounds on the heart. 
and their regulatory assay, uh, the ICHS 7B guideline, uh, was um, put together in 2005. But what they recognise is that this guideline is no longer fit for purpose, is that too many compounds are going through the pipeline and are failing in very late stage clinical trial or else are going into market and then failing. And if we look at the compounds that have failed over the last few years, these are an example of some compounds from pharma companies, and the costs and the liability costs of these are averaged to be around about $150 billion. These are not the development costs, these are just purely the liability costs. And so cardiac toxicity is a serious issue for pharmaceutical companies. So normally, what a pharma company will do is they will test a compound and engineered cells such as a CHO hex cell that has one ion channel present within that cell. And then we'll also look at uh, high doses of this compound in volunteers uh, in a thorough QT test and a phase uh, two, three of uh, clinical trial testing. So these are the normal methods of use. But what is happening is these compounds are going too far through uh, clinical trial testing into market, and the toxicity is often detected when in market. Okay. So now what we need to do is have new methods to, to be able to detect this toxicity uh, at an earlier stage, because this is time and money that should be spent elsewhere. With the advent of a uh, 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 cardiac stem cells, we now have new tools that will allow us to assess cardiac toxicity. This audience will be aware of the, uh, EC, the normal ECG measurement of the heart. It's a flow of salts uh, in the solution surrounding the heart. Normally then what we need to do uh, for pharmaceutical companies is to test to make sure we do not cause any issues with uh, cardiac um, normal salt solution. Uh, diffusing through the membrane of the cell. So this is what we see in that ECG measurement. Anything that prolongs this waveform can result in arrhythmias, torsade de points, and it can then cause serious uh, issues um, for individuals. And so now with stem cells, we have fully integrated cells that we can use in order to assess better the effects of compounds in the heart. So in 2013, the FDA formed a committee that decided that what they will do in future is to use cardiac stem cells for uh, toxicity measurements to the heart. So they have formed a committee called CEPA, and what they're doing is looking at the whole integrated heart cell together. They're not focusing on what used to be the original uh, potassium ion channel, but they're looking at multiple ion channels because these ion channels can work together and they can negate it, each other and compensate for each other in a fully functioning cardiac cell. So now the FDA has been validating stem cells that exist on the market and they have gone through a two-phase validation procedure and their intention is December 2017 that they will implement cardiac uh, stem cells uh, as a new regulatory test. So this is a great example of stem cells being used uh, in the marketplace to speed up uh, drug discovery processes and to be more predictive and to produce safer medicines. So at Stem Cell and Devices in Kyoto, we produce our own cardiac stem cells through technology license from Kyoto University. And what we're doing now is building initially 3D models with these stem cells to be more predictive than the current 2D models which exist on the market. It also allows us to be able to take more measurements from the 2D models. This so the FDA has chosen two technologies in order to be able to screen these compounds uh, as regulatory tests. The first um, method that, and platform that we'll implement is the microelectrode array. The second are voltage sensitive dye work. So what we have been doing as a company is taking our 3D models and validating them on these platforms uh, using the compounds that the FDA recommends. So this is an example of the waveform and, um, so, and showing that there are very reproducible results from these tissues. This is showing that we can pick up from the microelectrode array 
all of these um, uh, action potential and electro, uh, electrophysiology waveforms, extremely re reproducible across all of the platform. Also, that was microelectrode array. This is voltage sensitive dye. These tissues are reproducible and stable, and this is then being shipped three days, still beating at 37 degrees uh, on a plane from Kyoto to Glasgow. And the field potential duration from them is very reproducible from tissue to tissue. What we see here, this is an example of a compound that affects the heart. It will increase the waveform of the action potential and we very easily pick up the effects and any arrhythmic effects from, these, uh, fr from this drug. So this is an example of one of the compounds. And these are examples of other compounds that we have tested uh, on the heart, looking at both uh, potassium, sodium, calcium channels, sodium channel effects, <coughs> and we can easily pick up <coughs> excuse me, these effects of the compounds within these micro tissues. That is a voltage sensitive dye from the microelectrode array, again showing um, that we can pick up effects of these compounds that would have gone into market and would have not have been detected at in vivo, in vitro or clinical trial stage. So what we have then are 3D uh, products which um, are very easy to use can be shipped live globally to any company or any academic lab globally. They arrive in perfect condition, they're beating and they're ready to use. It takes away the, the, the tissue culture time, the technician time required, and they're very predictive of adult responses. And they can be used for long-term acute chronic studies of, of compounds, so you can look at uh, structural and functional uh, effects of compounds. This is the initial market for this company, but the plan is to think about these for attaching to repair the heart for future. And this is uh, some of the members of the company. And um, thank you. And please get in touch if you would like to hear anything else or get some more information from us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for attending the, uh, this symposium. Uh, time is exceeded, so uh, question and answer, please drop by our uh, Kyoto University uh, site. Thank you very much.